it's live. Okay. Well, hello, and I hope everybody can hear me okay. Welcome to my first uh, attempt at a live stream. Hope everybody's doing okay. Got to get to the keyboard here. Welcome to my abode. Please let me know if you can hear me okay. I think so. Spent a lot of time goofing around with settings on this thing to try to figure it out. And welcome, everybody. I see people from Quebec, from North Yorkshire in the UK, from Paris. Bonjour. Comment ça va? I don't speak French like Trevor does, so that's all you're going to get from me. Hello from Toronto. Hi, Eddie. I hope everybody's uh, doing okay, uh, hunkered down in uh, what we've got going here. 
you can hear. Good stuff. Good stuff. It's my first attempt setting this up. Sorry for some false starts earlier, but I wanted to test everything out before I went live, of course. Thank you, uh, Jeff and Reno, one of my very avid viewers, for letting me know that it sounds good as well. And again, thanks for taking the time out of your schedules, whether you're streaming Netflix or taking care of kids or trying to figure out how to uh, kill some time and as we're all in lockdown mode. I hope that uh, I can help you out and uh, talk for the next hour or so, answer some questions. Really, this is just a uh, um, uh, chance just to talk. You know, I've seen a lot of other YouTubers do live streams and I haven't attempted it, so I figured I'll research it and watch lots of videos and get the right software and set it all up. And uh, yeah, somebody said the bunker, you're absolutely right. James Paul, uh, this is my basement in, in our house, which is unfinished, and uh, I have my office slash studio down here. So uh, I've unplugged <laughs> things that might make us some noises down here. Uh, so hopefully uh, the noise won't come on and it won't, uh, won't bother us too much. Um, there is no agenda, really. I mean, I can talk about some of the most current news stories. I just taped my um, next episode yesterday, so I'm in the throes of editing today and tomorrow. So uh, I, there's a lot of stuff that I followed up on that, and you'll get a chance to see that in the next day or so. Hopefully I'll have it out by Monday. Um, yeah, BYD bla uh, Blade Batteries is something that I did talk about on the show. Um, so we could talk about it now if you want to. Hello, Ireland as well. I see, uh, and from Florida, and Dorset. Now, Dorset, is that Dorset, England, or is that Dorset, Ontario? Because I've been to Dorset, Ontario, Lake of the Base, Roy, so I appreciate that. You have to let me know where you're from. Uh, hello from down under, Rob. I hope everybody's doing well down there. Um, it's a beautiful country. I was last in Australia a couple years ago, probably about three years ago, I think, when I did a... Uh, convention circuit to um, Adelaide and Perth. I love Perth, actually. It's quite quite the journey for me, but it was a lot of fun. It's a beautiful area there. And I've been, to, of course, to other parts of Australia when I served in the Canadian military and the Navy way back when, in the early 80s, during the Reagan era in the U.S. and uh, the Cold War, and we did our thing in the Pacific Ocean. I was based in B.C., and hey, Stephen, how are you? Yeah, long time no see. Thanks for, for joining in. Um, I guess the first, so if you have questions, just put it on the chat. Um, I haven't seen anything on emails yet, uh, and that's fine since we're here. Uh, again, this is informal. This is just kind of my first kick at the can of doing a live stream and trying to uh, uh, spend some time with you guys and gals and uh, answer some questions maybe that I have and keep it informal. Uh, there was so NC uh, asked about uh, the blade batteries. Yeah, so as I mentioned, I've done a piece on that in this upcoming show. But basically, uh, it's pretty cool stuff because they've uh, they're able to pack more density into a smaller footprint and also um, make them very safe. Safety is kind of where BYD was going with this. Um, they wanted to, you know, there's a nail penetration test. There's um, uh, they're going to boil these things, they're going to heat them up and uh, put them through the ringer. Uh, but the results from all the testing and, and all the analysis so far has been very positive uh, for BYD. So that's great that, uh, that this kind of technology is coming out. And uh, hi, New Brunswick, I see. Um, V10 PDTDI, it looks like you maybe have a Volkswagen. Uh, hello, New Brunswick. I've got... Uh, Yes, uh, I've got relatives. Uh, my cousin is uh, in the army in uh, Gagetown, so he lives in Fredericton. So uh, we're actually we're planning a trip out there this summer, a road trip, to go see him and spend some time. So I love uh, New Brunswick, I love the East Coast. Uh, Barry, Esquimalt Buccaneer days, you got that correct. Uh, that was my home base for a few years in the '80s, and um, still uh, still keep in touch uh, with a couple of buddies, but uh, most of us have grown old and gone on to different things. Um, so yeah, you'll get more a little bit more information on the BYD blade batteries, but it's it's pretty cool. And uh, again, I love the way that battery technology is advancing and uh, is moving forward to uh, to better. And uh, that's you know that's just the way technology is. Um, what do I think about the future of electric vehicles, Rob? Thanks for asking the question. Boy, that's a um, uh, that's a great question. I mean, I talk about that a lot on the shows. 
Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that electric vehicles will be the new norm at some point in time. It's not a matter of if, I believe it's a matter of when, and I believe that most analysts and people that are following the industry agree with me. What we don't agree on is the when part. Uh, it's all over the map as far as tipping points and how you gauge tipping points and what you feel, um, you know, that that uh, chasm that we cross is and when we've made those paradigm shifts. So they are through a whole bunch of nice words out there to you that I've learned <laughs> over time. Uh, but it's very positive and, and I believe that um, what we're going through now with this crisis, with this pandemic, uh, I believe that once we get out of it, there's going to be a, a lot more awareness uh, from an overall health perspective, of course, and how that relates to the environment and to us as a human race and the planet. At least that's my hope, is that the, the awareness will be much more acute in, in a general sense. Um, and I believe that people will start looking at EV adoption more seriously. We just need those OEMs to get with the program, as you've heard me say many, many times. So thanks, Rob, for that question. Um, advice on battery charge levels during low use from Barry. Thanks, Barry, for the question. I'm not an expert on battery, so I would definitely follow um, whatever vehicle you have in the advice uh, that the manufacturer gives for that. I can tell you on the Nissan Leaf, they just tell me, charge it and use it as much as you want. Just don't worry about it. The car will take care of itself. And that's basically what I've been doing. I plug it in. Um, Come home, even if even if I'm at 70%, plug it in, I'm at 100 the next day, and off I go. Um, in my over two years now, or just approaching two years, I've, I've still hanging around the 92.8% state of health, uh, which, again, is not a 100% accurate number on Leaf Spy, but it's pretty close. So, um, you know, I would follow your manufacturer rec uh, recommendations. Yes, we are not, not using them very much. So some people are saying keep it at 80%, uh, don't keep it at 100% all the time or, you know, because there is going to be some sort of small drain on that. Each uh, manufacturing vehicle is different from what they call the phantom drain or the vampire drain, excuse me. But um, keep an eye on that. Just check in forums. And of course, there's tons of resources, um, Barry, that you can find on that. So, uh, hey, JP, good to see you. Yeah, there's lots of changes, lots of closures. I know it looks like here locally, we're going to have public closures going for another few months till about the end of June right now for most of the municipalities. So this isn't going to uh, stop anytime soon. Um, it's going to uh, continue on. Uh, so, you know, hope everybody's staying safe, of course. Uh, Jean-Pierre Le Benoit, what are we waiting for to have our own Canadian electric car? We have the technology, don't we? Yeah. You're absolutely right. We have great technology. We have a fantastic brain trust here in Canada. A lot of smart people. There are some Canadian quote unquote companies. You know, um, I could think of um, the uh, guys out west there, the three wheel car guys, and I just lost their names Electromechanico or something like that. Even though it's a Chinese based company, they are very heavy in the Canadian side starting there. So we do have some quote unquote startups and guys that are or that are trying to get stuff but from a mainstream it's really going to have to be the OEMs that um, that need to step up to uh, to fill the plate from an EV perspective and from what's available from an electric vehicle marketplace uh, so thanks for that I mean uh, keep your eyes open maybe we'll see more you know it's a cost a lot of money to produce a car right I mean Tesla's <clears throat> gone through that it's taken them you know, 10 years to get to this, 11 years to get to the to the spot that they're in, a lot of money, a lot of investment. So it's not that easy. You know, it's a billion dollars just to, to think about getting into the car business. So, um, you know, I think we're pretty, really good at uh, uh, coming to light and engineering and smart people bringing different technologies. So whether it's drivetrain or batteries or motors or other components, I think we can add a lot there. So stay tuned for what we're, what's going on in Canada. Yeah, Jeff and Reno, you're absolutely right. I was going to talk about that in the last show, but it's been pretty publicized. You know, satellite views are a huge, huge production uh, reduction in pollution uh, because of all the ice uh, vehicles that are not on the road. So um, do I think this data will wake up the climate deniers? Uh, I hope so. That's a great question. I really hope so. I know the media has been pushing it a little bit, but not as much because obviously there's other things at top of mind. Um, but um, I think it will. I mean, again, you know, my hope that when we come out of this whole pandemic crisis is that 
there will be much more emphasis and thought around health, the state of health from a, from a humanity perspective for many fronts. Um, and, you know, one of them including, you know, this is just a small taste of what Mother Nature can do to us. And if we continue to muck up the planet, um, you know, and with the various things that we're doing, and, you know, we're not a perfect race, but we have the, the smarts to make changes and hence doing what I do. So I really do hope it wakes up some of the climate deniers. Again, we have to correlate that um, information that we see here with um, with actual changes in climate, and that takes some time. So even though emissions are down and we're not seeing the pollution, of course, I think the, the more major benefit that we'll see is maybe more health-related once we get through the pandemic. Uh, we'll probably see some benefits there and, and, and you know, and other uh, uh, life on the planet, you know, being or earthbound, underwater life. You, I think that we'll start maybe seeing some of these things return. So, uh, yeah, it is what it is. So let's hope let's hope that happens. I'm just trying to scroll down to keep up. Uh, let's see another question. Uh, BYD uses lithium ion phosphate is cheaper but had lower energy density in the past. Correct, but these uh, again these blade technologies are using different technologies and I uh, different chemicals. And I'll be talking about that briefly on my next show, so I won't I won't get into a lot of detail here. Which do I think will be the first country to make all of their cars are electric? Boy, that's a good. Good question from Blogza. Blogza, thank you for that. Um, well, you know, uh, I mean, Norway's well over 50% now of their net new sales on a yearly basis being plug-in vehicles. So, you know, if if every, anybody can do it, it's those guys because you're pretty well well ahead. So that's where I would put my money on it or another country that's so small that it could be done relatively easy. Um, pick a small country that might have, you know, 100 cars on it or something. Who knows? But I'll stick with the Scandinavians for now. I think Norway is probably going to be be there. Uh, Mark's asking, uh, mentions his Nissan Leaf isn't getting much use during the thing, so I had to do emergency stops to clean the discs. Uh, yeah, it's a good point. You know, we still are having some cool, damp weather here, at least in Canada and southern Ontario. Uh, it's been up and down, um, a little bit on the cooler side, and when you get that dampness, you can get that surface rust going on pretty quick. Uh, again, you know, it won't kill your disc brakes. It's just something you need to do to uh, run it for a little bit, just to warm them up after a few minutes and get that surface rust off. It's a good idea, Mark, to do that. Um, now you know did uh, James Paul saying now you know did a great video the other day uh, showing how much pollution yeah absolutely uh, is absolutely for sure and Norway is way ahead of terms in adoption rate Pascal you're absolutely correct uh, Doug asked do you know any companies taking advantage of Tesla open passion pa patents um, that's a good question I should probably research that I don't I'm sure that there are um, and I don't know to what degree because there's a lot of patents that Tesla has opened up, so I don't know to what degree, but I'm sure sure that there are. Uh, J JP, any solar panels and battery storage to your home? Not to my home, JP, and I'll tell you two reasons. Mainly, uh, I mean, battery storage is something I've kicked around. I'm, I'm thinking about that, but um, uh, solar panels, no, because we don't plan on staying in this home uh, long enough to recoup the return on the investment. They're still expensive. Um, I was kind of waiting for the Tesla solar roof to come up here, and it, you know, it's some people are claiming they can bring it up, but it doesn't look like it's it's a cheap solution or a cost-effective solution. And what I mean by that is I'd have to stay in the home another 15, 20, 25 years, depending on on the price point, to kind of recoup that investment with energy credits and lowering bills and and such. So. Um, I don't think that is something I'm going to look at. We have some decent so, uh, southern exposure on our we're an uh, east east west facing house, so we we do actually you know there's a good part of the roof that follows the sun all day, um, so I could maximize some of that. But um, it's just it's more of an ROI. We don't plan on staying here. We've been here uh, over ten years already, in this home. In fact, we're coming up on our tenth year. Uh, gee, in a couple of days, like any day now. Uh, we've been 10 years, and and I'm hoping to retire in about um, seven or eight years. I th eight years, I think, is the count right now. So I don't think we're going to get it back and then maybe downsize. But thanks for the question. Battery storage, I'm still kicking around. I'm not 100% sure. I've been looking at some of the natural gas systems that they offer, you know, for blackouts and that kind of stuff. The generators that are, uh, that are um, operated by natural gas, so um, and they can go indefinitely again. 
but they're expensive too. And to be honest, JP, our power here is really good. I'm just north of Brampton, uh, north of Toronto in the Caledon area. And we have pretty stable power. You know, it might go out a couple of times a year for very short periods. Um, so, it, you know, again, the, to spend three, four, five, six thousand on a backup system where it's not really going to going to to save us anything um it doesn't make sense to for my use case but for many it does um steven uh keep seeing them at 100 percent, no good but who knows i keep the tesla at 90 leaf at 50 to 75 so there you go steven's asking that 100 percent is not good but uh, who knows Okay, I, I am driving my car a couple times a week. I mean, last week I went to the office four times from Monday to Thursday. Um, my situation is unique where my office, I'm the only person going there. So I'm kind of going from isolation at home to, to my car to the office, which I'm the only one, and then I reversed that route. Um, we have some equipment that still comes and goes within our warehouse, so I, I'm the shipper receiver as well as doing everything else uh, from a sales perspective in that small office. So uh, I go in, and uh, it helps uh, so I do, I am able to drive the car a bit and then charging it. So I'm, I'm working that battery, but there are a few days where, um, that I haven't. Um, so I just leave it, leave it sitting. Pino, how are you? Hope things are well in Windsor. I know you guys are going through a tough time. Um, yeah, Magna should definitely make some Canadian EVs. Pino, you're absolutely right. If anybody has the manpower and the connections to do it, you know, that whole business, um, again, stay tuned. Um, you know, we might see something come out. Um, I definitely think uh, the OEMs are going to look to, to build plants, uh, to move EV production into Canada. If that's what you're asking, I definitely think will happen. Um, so we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Uh, yeah, Electra Mechanica. That, thanks, Barry. Those are the guys I was trying to think of. I actually looked at them a few years ago. I met with their president virtually and, and uh, walked through a business plan with those guys. And I just, you know, I, I like the concept. I like the idea. I just don't see that vehicle here in, in my neck of the woods being that popular we have some you know it's not uncommon for people in the gta the greater toronto area to be driving an hour to an hour and a half each way to work uh, in the normal uh, scheme of things and um those vehicles are pretty small we get a lot of vehicles on the highway you know as an urban runabout great but yeah I, I don't know i just didn't see it so you know and i know that they're 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 still nowhere near where they thought they were going to be at this time so uh, you know best of luck to them i like everybody who's of course putting a product out there in the ev landscape to uh, to help out james so you keep your leaf at 100 percent. there you go james um tell me about the vega hey mr automobile well you, all i know about the vega is what i last reported i have reached out to those folks and i've asked them uh for more info but i haven't heard anything and obviously um, uh, all those countries, India, India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, everybody's in pretty serious lockdown mode. So it's probably not a lot going on at this point. Um, but it's a cool card and gain a really, really slick machine for coming from a company that you wouldn't think, uh, you know, has that capability, but they do. They have extremely smart people. A lot of tech is actually R and D out there. So, uh, I wish them the best of luck and I will continue Mr. Automobile to follow up with them. Thanks for asking that. Uh, Roy, one good thing about the lockdown is that my vehicle is, is uh, vehicle to grid system with your 30 kilowatt hour leaf is making me some good profits. Good for you. Um, you're obviously in Europe somewhere. A 14 pence, if I'm reading that right. Good, good for you in the UK, Roy. Yeah, I mean, um, that is something that Nissan's looking at bringing to the US. And, and they've been talking about it for a while, but it hasn't happened. But I was going to talk about it on the last show, but I had to cut a few articles out. But uh, if you Google um, if you Google the sites, you'll see that uh, I believe it's Wallbox um, in the US that's going to start looking at integrating some vehicle to grid systems in the US. Um, about, I think, four to six K a unit, something like that. So they're not cheap, cheap, but, you know, again, looking at the ROI benefits um, of that, it could, could definitely um, mean some good stuff. There's a, there's a new snowmobile company in, snowmobile company in Quebec. Okay, good. Uh, snowmobiles are right now, we're kind of getting away from that season, but uh, I did talk about the e electrification of uh, auxiliary vehicles and recreational vehicles of all sorts. So that's certainly something that's positive. Uh, just uh, put on Twitter something about electric motor, um, uh, uh, boat motors, uh, like Evan Rood and all those guys. Um, so that's good. Yeah, I think I agree with you, Jean Pierre. Um, there are lots of positive that's going to come out of this. We've just got to got to get through it, and uh, 
and 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 I think the the mind mindset is going to shift somewhat for sure. And congratulations that you've got a leaf. Thank you for joining the revolution. That you're ordering a Model Y when everything's back to normal. Yeah, uh, 68 percent in 2019. I didn't think it was that high, JP, but it could be in Norway. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, if you heard that, great. I, you're plugged in as well. Uh, yeah, definitely reducing regs and EV adoption. What do you think, uh, NC, about Corona? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Corona is affecting everything, right? This CV-19, every industry basically is being impacted. Uh, that's why you're seeing automobile manufacturers and other manufacturers of different uh, different items uh, retool and gear up to help the fight the cause where they're dealing with masks. And I talk about that on this next uh, episode coming up, the next newscast. Um, there's a couple of companies I mentioned that are gearing up, but many, many uh, are, are doing that to, to provide masks and shields and all, all the PPE technologies and equipment. So that's good. Uh, yeah, this is obviously going to slow down the entire auto industry. So not just EV adaption or adoption, I should say, but um, the entire automobile industry. I mean, dealers aren't moving much inventory. There's stuff still happening, but it's slowed down because of people's, uh, you know, insecurity about their current financial situations and their their short to medium term uh, uh, financial, uh, you know, work elements. Right? It's something that a lot of people are thinking about. That uh, battery swap technology. Um, I, there's not much to tell Mr. Automobile because I'm not aware of anybody really doing that other than some of the uh, guys like Renault and those guys that do battery leasing on their vehicles uh, to buy so that you know they can go in and swap it. But there aren't there isn't a lot on a large scale from a battery swap. I know in India that on some of the three wheel electrified transports uh, to machines that they've got these setups where you can drive up and yank your battery out and throw another one in almost like a like one of these EV lawnmower batteries, but a little bit bigger and then off you go you can do a leasing program there that's kind of small scale on a larger scale for regular automobiles i'm not seeing anything really mass there might be some some uh small r d going on and some other trials but i'm not seeing a lot happen there so uh, thanks for the question eddie thank you very much for your donation here wow i'm not even i wasn't even aware that uh you can get revenue out of this thing i'm just doing it to try to keep in touch with everybody and so that we all don't go crazy uh together or at the same time here but thank you for that i appreciate uh your comments as well as your donation eddie and yes uh, i am trying to stay healthy as much as possible i'm the only one going out right now of our house other than when we go around outside for a walk as a family but i do all the groceries and uh and i'm going out uh, once or twice a week to do that i helping some family out as well here and there by taking some groceries and checking in. So uh, again, um, if you have family and friends uh, that you're concerned about, please check in on them, even talk to them, even video chatting keeps the sanity. And if somebody needs hand, uh, a hand, give it to them. But again, do it from a distance, do, you know, practice the social distancing. And um, as YouTube's just starting to advertise here, you know, uh, stay at home and save lives. And it does work. We, we really need to do that. Um, JP, yeah, uh, you're hoping for new future builds will integrate. Yeah, you know, that certainly can, can come. I think it'll take some time because it really has to come to a cost, right? If I'm going to buy a new home, it's going to be 20000 bucks more for a solar roof, maybe, if I'm going to stay in that home for 15 to 20 years. But if it's another 5K, it's a no-brainer, or even 8K, you know, that versus the metal roofs, which are about that, uh, I would definitely go with a solar roof for sure. Um, trickle charge for sure. Uh, NC. Hey, thanks, Mark, for your donation. And hi from SoCal. Uh, thank you. It's good to. Uh, I am doing well. Thanks. Uh, appreciate your comments and thanking me for all I do. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, I used to live in LA, actually, Mark. I, I went to high school in um, just the Hollywood air, Hollywoodish area. Um, actually, not far from the Orange Mall. Uh, no, not Orange Mall. Is it? I don't know. Uh, Wilshire area. So Wilshire and La Brea, I went to school there. And I lived in Hollywood at Sunset Western area, just, just a little bit east of there, uh, south of um, the G Planetarium, which I just lost the name now. Uh, I should know these things. Just kind of at the bottom of the hill and just south of Sunset. So I uh, love SoCal. Wishing all you guys all the best, of course. I know it's a hard time in the U.S., but uh, I think the measures, you know, these stricter measures will, will come. But we have to remember, folks, I'm not an expert in this, but I've been watching and reading enough that we are, you know, the numbers and all the progression that we see are numbers that are ahead of where the, uh, are behind where we are actually. That's what I meant to say. So we're probably, 
you know, uh, one to two weeks uh, behind where the actual cases could be. So it's going to get worse before it gets better, but it will get better. Keep the faith. Um, Doug, yeah, battery swapping is dead. I think so. I think so. Um, maybe I'll retire to an off-grid solar home and an RV. Maybe. I love RVs. We used to have a 22-foot travel trailer that we pulled around with a minivan way back when, but my wife's not a big fan of RVs, so she's the one I have to convince. But maybe. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, hey, hello from uh, St. Anne, Manitoba. Hey, hey, Tyson, how are you? I hope things are well out there. I know everybody's in, in lockdown, uh, but I love Manitoba. I haven't been out to Winnipeg for some time, but I love going out there. Um, how do they pay for the road repairs construction compared to the gas tax model used elsewhere in countries that have higher EV percentage like Norway? It's a good question, Jeff. Um, I'm assuming that it's paid out of the general tax base that they collect. You have to remember countries like Norway have very high um, levels of social uh, integration and education systems and healthcare because you're paying a roughly around a 40 to 45 percent mean tax. So, uh, and everybody pays that level. It's it, it, I, I don't know if it's based 100 percent on income. There might be some some layers there. I haven't looked at it, but you know the the populace is paying for that. So I would I would guess that um, that road repairs, construction, all that kind of stuff is coming out of their their tax model. I don't know what their gas tax model is, um, but I know that obviously when people are incentives to buy EVs and you're saving like double the price or or a very high majority of you know thirty to fifty percent increase if you buy an EV versus a less if you buy a an EV versus a regular ICE fee, um, that's certainly a motivator. So, uh, you know, the, the people are paying for that stuff. Parts manufacturers are stepping up. Yep, they're getting into ventilators and all that stuff as well, for sure, James. And I, I believe that we are uh, producing some parts here already for EVs, maybe drive motors and things like that, some electronics uh, that are coming from Canadian companies. So there is already that there. Uh, Roger, hey, how are you, Roger? Thanks for uh, enjoying the channel. I appreciate it. Um, you, you follow me and the fully charged folks. Yeah, they're great, the fully charged folks. But would you like to? Uh, but would like to know what other EV channels you subscribe to? You know, it's a great question. I don't uh, subscribe, to be honest, Roger, to very many channels because I don't have time to watch a lot of additional stuff. I focus on information gathering during the week for my shows. Um, and I try to keep what I gather maybe different from what others are talking about because if five or six channels are talking about the same stuff, then I don't know if I can add a lot more value there to what's already been told. So I, I try to kind of really ignore what else is going on. You know, I watch video reviews and that kind of stuff from folks. Uh, my good friends in the UK, you know, James and Kate, shout out to you guys. I love you guys. They're doing excellent stuff there. Uh, Evie, Nick, um, there's a bunch of people that are doing some good stuff and I do watch uh, some of their stuff. But again, for me, it's time. Uh, yes, we're home and we should have a lot more time, but I'm still pretty busy during the days, even working from home. And then uh, with all of us, you know, trying to unwind and uh, try to spend some time together as a family as well when uh, when we're not all e-learning. Uh, my daughter's in college, so she's on e-learning uh, all day. And my wife's working from home and she's busy uh, with her job working from home, really busy. So uh, I don't watch a lot of other EV channels, but I do pick out videos that I see and I'll watch a specific video if I want to learn something. So there are some good things. And it's really a multitude of sources, uh, to be honest with you. Um uh, so thanks for that question. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Let me catch up here. I'm talking too much. Uh, greetings from Switzerland. Hey, Power, how are you? I got to get to Switzerland. I have family in Germany, uh, and uh, but I have a wish list of a lot of other countries to go see in Europe. I've, I've seen a lot, but I need to go further. So thank you for very much for watching, for, for following me as well. Tyson, hey Tyson, next EVs will have V2 uh, vehicle to grid. Um, you're just rolling your 2012 volt until then. 300,000K and going. Awesome. I love to hear that. It just, again, resubstantiates the point that EVs are durable machines uh, because of the less moving parts and you've got this. Uh, instant torque and you know the drive motors are fantastic they're really ruggedized they're really rugged devices that you're able to get these kind of kilometers uh, quite easy um blogza what are there some indirect industries affected by ev that'd be good to invest in boy uh <laughs> yeah you're absolutely right i'm nowhere near an advisor uh on opinions you're gonna have to scope those out you know certainly the battery manufacturers or or the 
suppliers for battery manufacturers, anybody in that uh, food chain there is a good indicator uh, of industries that I would look at. Um, uh, certainly, I mean, I would, you know, everybody talks about Tesla stock and, and they do, they go up and down. I would t typically stay away from the manufacturers because they're not cheap stocks to begin with and they do go up and down quite a lot. So I would look at the supply chain manufacturers. So anybody that's involved in that supply chain from an industry, be it motors, be it, you know, um, some of the electronics, uh, the, again, the, the battery providers and the spin-off companies that supply uh, elements, parts, uh, chemicals, and stuff for those industries are good picks. Um, and I always say, keep it. If you have a portfolio, keep it diversified. And you know, they, we have we're having these big swings right now. Uh, you know, watching some of the markets and the big losses one day, and then you gain some back, and then it dumps again. You've got to ride this thing out. So don't panic buy and panic sell. I mean, uh, ride this out. So hopefully, a blog, a blogs out that adds. Uh, answer some of your question. Uh, what is the electric car magazine on your desk? Boy, you guys can see a lot. That's great. Um, this is something we I picked up from uh, Fully Charge. It was the equivalent to the Electric Vehicle Society here in Canada. It's the uh, E Electric Vehicle Association, EVA or EAA, Electric Automobile Association. I forget now. Uh, yeah, Electric Auto, Auto Associates says right there. Uh, and they were doing a membership drive at the Fully Charged Live Austin, and they were, they uh, put together these magazines specifically for their use, and they were giving them out. And I thought it was a great idea. So it basically lists every electric car that's available in the U.S., a buyer's guide, your typical buyer's guide with specs and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's I don't know if you can get it from them. It, it has a price point, but if you Google... Yeah, that's what it is. Electriccarinsider.com uh, is on the cover here, so uh, check that out. Uh, but definitely a handy magazine that I uh, that I uh, talk with people sometimes. So appreciate the question. Uh, thanks, Roy. Was fitted for free from ASA trial vehicle to grid. Um, excellent. Was there Tyson? Uh, there was an EV manufacturer Israel that expanding battery swap. Yeah, but might have been bankruptcy again. That's a tough market. Um, you know, I like the idea of modular batteries. Of course, that can be swapped. It will bring the price down if you have to do pack repairs or pack swaps. I think that's a great idea. Um, but uh, we'll have to wait and see if that can come out. Uh, let's see. see. Did I see the battery at Atlas? Seems more interested in selling their platform. Yeah, you know, Tyson, good question. I haven't talked a lot about Atlas because I think I mentioned it on one show when I did that. What they have today is basically just some concept animations and they have about 10 people or something like that, you know, with a million bucks or a couple of million they've raised. I mean, they're, you know, they're nowhere near, um, for, you know, any, anything to, that's going to hit the street anytime soon. So until they, they gain, uh, some more, take some more steps forward, you know, I don't really think that, that there's much going on there. And if they're producing platforms, then that could be a, maybe a better business model for them. Other than, again, it's very expensive to build an automobile or a truck or whatever. Hi, Anna Marie. Yes, Griffith Park. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't remember that. Uh, and I know you know that. Thank you very much, uh, for, commenting on that i appreciate it a huge snow dump tyson well uh good that your solar panels are cleared norway also have public funds from crude sales okay that's interesting uh, uh jean pierre in quebec uh yeah you know you guys are really ahead of the curve from an ev adoption right quebec's been been pushing for quite a long time um and you know it's a big province there's a lot of rural elements to quebec uh so you know the, the charger um, they've made some good expansions. There's still much more to go, and uh, we're getting there. Uh, yes, the Hollywood Bowl, but that was m a little farther from us. Anna, uh, uh, that was farther from me, Anna Marie. I remember that Hollywood Bowl. Um, fully charged transport evolved. So yeah, Heinrich, uh, thanks for watching and the question. Yeah, fully charged. Again, I catch a few of them once in a while. There's a lot of material that they're putting out. You know, they are fully charged. Remember, guys and gals, fully charged and transport evolved are full time YouTubers now that are businesses around the YouTube platform. Everything they're doing, they're, they are full time businesses. Nikki, God bless her, what she does. Uh, met her, and, you know, we did, of course, the panel down in Austin. We had a good time to chat for a little bit. Uh, she's fully invested in what she does, and and that's a that's a full time business. This is not for me, folks. This is a side passion more than than thinking about it as a business. I have a full time job. I do a volunteer and community work around where I live and some other elements. So um, I'm part of the e Electric Vehicle Society of Canada, and I have a local chapter that I've opened up here that I run and try to get to 
get uh, engagement, I go out. Um, I, I don't know if any of my friends from Waterloo, from uh, Riva, are, are, are on here, but um, I get out and do things with them. We do a lot of public interaction, go to events, talk to people, do some public speaking. I'm trying to ramp that up more. I'm actually going to be on a town of Caledon is hosting or some Earth Day stuff virtually, and they asked me to come on and speak. Uh, so I'll be doing that kind of stuff. So I just don't get the point there is I don't get a lot of time really to watch a lot of the other folks and do what they do. And again, I try to keep what I do uh, to me. You know, and if I'm if I'm if I'm just repeating everything Nikki is re saying or or everything Robert's saying, I don't again. I, I think you guys are going to get bored of that and, and say why. So um, so appreciate that. Hey Barry, a show and fully charged up and getting an EV. Excellent. Uh, you got an EV. That's what I love to hear. That's why I'm motivated in doing what I'm doing. Thank you very much for for saying that, Rogers. Uh, thank you as well. Appreciate it. Um, What's my daughter studying? Uh, she's in Seneca. Uh, she's already finished university, but she went back to kind of do what she really wants to do, which is art illustration. She's super talented, and I'm hoping that she can get into the video game animation industry, is what her uh, video game industry, sorry, for design, artistic design, not necessarily animation, but the, there's a difference. And she's uh, really doing well. She's coping okay. It's hard when you, you know, with sub, some of those subjects where you need much more teacher interaction because of, of what you're doing in art and, and things like that. But she's getting there. She's going to Seneca another year still or so for that to, to go through, but it's great to have her home. And uh, we only have one child, one daughter, so uh, my wife and I are very happy to have her here, and uh, there's no rush t for her to leave the house. Will, uh, will I be visiting Motor Coach to investigate their new highway coach? Um, if they're here in the Toronto area, sure, or in southern Ontario. But as far as getting going anywhere to fly anytime soon, that ain't going to happen, Tyson, but uh, I'll have to wait and see what happens. Solo uh, Scion updates. Yeah, I'm on their email list. The last thing is that they've hired a new CFO. Uh, is their last comment and they're they're again you know they're uh, keeping their employees working from home so really things have slowed down on the production uh, and the timelines for them to get the production on the solo on the scion excuse me with what's going on I think everything is going to be delayed but they are continuing to move forward um, let's see here uh, e-power what do I expect from the Tesla from the Tesla battery days um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you never know what you're going to get with Elon, and that's a good thing. It's He's like a box of chocolates, right? Um, it's going to be a surprise. You know, if anybody's been doing a ton of, you know, leading the way in batteries, I, I you know, people know I say this publicly. As far as the batteries and, and the BMS goes, Tesla has the best solution on the planet, bar none. However, the Koreans and a lot of other folks have really stepped up from a battery perspective and done some good things, you know, and LG and all these other guys are doing good things. So I, I think what we may see from the Tesla battery days is some more, some uh, things that they've got out of the Maxwell uh, integration, right? Uh, and I think Maxwell probably solid state, you know, I, I think that's probably what's going to lead that. Uh, we'll wait and see, you know, so come back and uh, send me an email after that. Let me know if I was way off or, or what. Um, VDG protocol, yeah. Uh, CCS has one, yeah. I'm just not aware, NC, of, of anybody that you're right, of anybody that's implemented it. It's been more a Chatamo, uh, especially a, a, a bi directional standard. Um, you're encouraging Doug, a, a fellow Wikipedian, to contribute to EV related pages. Great, that's great. Appreciate that. Uh, everybody that can contribute is a good thing. Uh, let me just see here. Gordon, hello. Uh, John, you're high school Pasadena. Hey, Gordon, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, I did not go to Pasadena. In fact, the school that I went to is no longer there. Um, it was uh, uh, sold off and uh, repurposed as a different school, under as a private school, actually, under a different school uh, element. Um, but, uh, yeah, good to see Pasadena and SoCal. Uh, folks at the Transport e Evolved aren't very keen to criticism. Well, I can't speak for them, Tyson. Everybody's their own. Uh, I'm certainly open to criticism and, um, you know, and comments. Of course, I always ask for it. Um, I know I can't please everybody, and nor do I try. I just try to be as accurate as I can and be enthusiastic in reporting and following the industry so that it gives more, just gives more benefits of what this EV industry can bring. Yes, Lucid Car, JP, Jean-Pierre, I saw that. 
Um, I was going to report on it, but I think I, I was going to, I kind of bumped it for until I see a bit more info. But yeah, they claim they did four, uh, 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 over 800 mile trip and just on two charges. So 400 miles of one charge. Uh, again, those are ideal conditions on the West Coast. Um, so that's good. But, you know, I'm really glad that uh, guys like those are, uh, are, are, are moving forward. You know, I think it's a beautiful car. Uh, very nice car. It's going to be more originally California focused as they grow the market, but I hope to see them nationally and internationally. Battery swapping for commercial short range vehicles? Absolutely, NC. And I think a great example of that would be short haul trucking where you have the facilities in-house to be able to do battery swapping, right? Go do your route. Uh, maybe stop at a transfer station or picking up new loads, swap it out, and off you go. You know, or short to medium haul, let's say. Uh, certainly see it more viable. I just don't know anybody implementing it. And I think Tesla, with their with the semi, they had talked about that potentially maybe doing something like that. Um, Doug, Drive Electric Earth Days are out, hoping we can do fall events. Yes, they are. Uh, certainly for Drive Electric, I know that uh, I'm, I'm plugged into the National Drive Electric Week folks and Plug in America. I get uh, communications from them all the time. So I know that all the events are going to be out, um, but um, uh, here in my town in Caledon, they're doing Earth Day events virtually or, or a seminar or something, and they've asked me to speak. So I think that's pretty cool. I think we'll see a lot more of this stuff. Smart charging. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, Mr. Automobile, about smart charging. Um, there's lots of different elements towards smart charging. It could be that, I mean, the cars themselves could control uh, how much, you, depending on the model and the manufacturer, how much it'll allow. You can stop it at 90%, 80%, some of them, some you can't, some you can just do timer. Uh, some of the um, wall units, uh, if you have one, have... Uh, uh, I, our IP enabled Wi-Fi or plug-in, and you can do a lot of cool things with that from a smart charging. So that's what I would add to that. If somebody else wants to add something, please put it in the comments. Whatever happened to the saltwater powered car? Don't know. I uh, don't remember hearing anything about that. Inductive charging. Boy, you got a lot of good technical questions. You might be asking the wrong guy here. Um, inductive is growing a bit in, po in, in popularity, and it, it's, it's a con very convenient. So I could certainly see it being rolled out potentially more for public infrastructures, or you just drive up and off. You, you don't have to worry about plugging in. The concern is that it's it's slower charging because of the nature of it. So it's, you know, more people are looking for faster, you know. So for level one, level two, I could certainly see it happening. And there are companies you can buy these packages and they'll install it for you. Um, but I don't know how, I, I don't know, I don't think it's going to get that big at this current point in time. Excuse me while I take a sip of water here. Uh, boy, that 45 minutes already, and we're just flying through this. Boy, you guys are keeping me entertained. I appreciate it. Thanks for all the great questions. Um, Heinrich, there are, much, there are a lot of professional YouTubers out there which have much less good content than yours. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Again, it, you know, for me, it's not a competition or everything. I'm glad to see more people talking about this industry than not. But I don't have a shtick. I don't have glam or anything like that. I, there's, you're not going to see that from me. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it real, and that's my approach. Um, you know, I've thought about maybe getting another partner to help me out, but then you know, it's it's time, and it's trying to sync up, and it's you know, right now with virtual, it, you can do it. But you know, I like to do the live shows, and it's just. Um, you know, it's just uh, easier for me to be on my own at this point so that I can uh, do things when I have the time and do it. So, uh, but thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, gamer. Uh, my daughter is very talented and uh, she does play games too. You're absolutely right. Uh, do I, uh, Einar Ing Ingi? Sorry, I'm, I'm messing up your name probably. Do you plan to stick with your Leaf or possible upgrade or a different brand? Uh, number three. Uh, I do want to get a second electric vehicle, a battery electric vehicle at some point. Um, I do want to go with a different brand because I'd like to get something with a bigger battery. I love the 40 kilowatt hour Leaf. It's been a great vehicle. You've seen my reviews and my comments on it. It's been fantastic. Uh, my job, once we get back out to the real world and able to travel again, I have a fairly big patch of southern Ontario to mid-Ontario that I cover. And uh, there are times where I need to do longer distance drivings to Ottawa or Kingston or Windsor or Lund uh, Windsor, uh, Sudbury, these kind of areas. So, uh, you know, the 40 kilowatt just doesn't cut it in the winter time. In the summer, I can get to some of these places, uh, no problem, but in the winter. So I would like to get something bigger. Um, and uh, I don't think it'll be the 62 kilowatt leaf, but I love the leaf. Uh, and my wife is a perfect candidate for driving 
fact, she loves to drive my Leaf. We we argue over it sometimes, um, but because I'm 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 the primary driver here. But for her work is like 15 kilometers uh, one way, so about 30 kilometers a day, uh, and they have charging there. So you know it would never cost us anything to put quote unquote fuel into into the Leaf if she takes it. So that's the plan. Is that I plan on keeping that Leaf for. And it's only been two years for another six, seven years easy. We tend to keep cars nine to ten years in this family of ours. So uh, run it to the ground. She'll get it and I'll get something else. Um, I don't know what model, but I'm definitely leaning towards Tesla as my next brand. However, in saying that, it depends what comes out because I'm not looking at anything till next year. So it depends what we what I see from VW actually get much closer. Um, but, you know, really, I mean, you know, from the fast charging perspective, Tesla still has that nailed down with supercharging. Yes, we're getting more um, fa DC fast chargers. We're getting 100, 100 kilowatts on 150s, up to 350s now for the more expensive cars. But from the really fast charging, when you really need to just to stop for 10, 15 minutes and then go, uh, at times, Tesla really has that down pat. So. The other guys are still playing catch up. They're doing okay. You know, the key is you you can pull 75 kilowatts, 80 ish. You know, on some of their models, okay, and that's not bad. It's not slow, um, but um, you know, Tesla still has that nailed. But I'll have to wait and see. You know, I'm still still out. I, I did again. I loved the Model Three. Just for me at the time, I didn't get it because it was a budget constraint. I, only the high priced, top of the line model was available. Didn't want to lose my our provincial incentives that we had at the time, which were very substantial. So I shopped around and got the best fit that I could within my budget, but uh, never ruled out Tesla. So who knows? It sank. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that's what happened. Kia Nero. Yeah, it's a great vehicle. I agree with you. Uh, S uh, NES mapper. It is one of the best options right now. Trying to find one can still be challenging. Um, ID4 definitely should be an exciting car. And, you know, I think Volkswagen is going to price that very aggressively. At least I hope they do. I've heard rumblings that that's what they'd like to do. And if they do, uh, you know, it's. I just tweeted out today a, a link from Inside EVs, or no, sorry, from Clean Technica that they had a few more videos showing more of the interior of the ID3, which should be pretty similar to the ID4 from an interior, from a dash, and, and some functionality. Yes, I know they're having some software issues, but they will work it out. Um, stay tuned for that. You know, uh, ID ID4 is uh, going to be a great car. The ID3 is going to be a great car. Ionic, it definitely is uh, a great car, price for price, one of the most efficient. Okay, and again, you know, these Koreans, they're from an efficiency, they're doing really well. You know, based on what they got. Hey. Hi, Mark from Las Vegas. I hope you're doing okay out there. It's hard for that city to shut down, of course. Um, great to see more manufacturers, skateboard platforms. That is the basically the rules of uh, getting into the EV game. Is that what you, you need to get to that point? And everybody's doing it. It just makes sense. And uh, uh, yeah, SUVs again. You know that's where the money is for all, you know all the the vendors that are trying to get into this game and spool up. You know, there that's where the margins are in the higher price vehicles, and that's where a lot of the market is. You know, especially in North America per se, um, that's just where it is. But we it will scale down. It'll have to come down. Uh, yeah, I'd love to see more two seaters. Uh, you know, uh, four door hatchbacks. You know, that kind of stuff. So it it will happen. Uh, it will happen, Mark. I appreciate the the question. The diversity, it's just, again, people are going to, the manufacturers, the OEMs are going to start with their, you know, more higher priced um, and higher profitable model lines and uh, and vehicles. And then, you know, work those economies of scale uh, from the whole battery, from the whole plug-in food chain down so that they can start making those smaller cars. Uh, Tesla appears to be working on dry ba battery electrodes. Could be okay. Good for them on the China. I know China's ramped up now. Um, they are going. Uh, Luis Calderon, uh, Buenos dias, como estas? Hope you're okay, Luis. Um, is it a good idea to get a 2011 Leaf motorbikes? Uh, don't uh, you do a lot of short rides? Uh, you hate the idea of getting gas car. Yeah, I mean, again, if you know, if a 2011 Leaf, if you can find one that's got the range that's in in good shape that'll meet your needs specifically, don't don't worry about what other people say. You look at what your needs are. Hey, great, get it. You know, um, I don't know where you are, where, where your climate. Oh, Costa Rica. Okay, so that's what you're saying. Um, so you've got a nice climate, so you're not going to really worry about 
the battery degradation, unless you're doing a lot of rapid charging, then that's the other way. So the older models, of course, still have some of those. Uh, I think they, they solved it with the, the Lizard Pack, so you have to check into that. But, uh, you know, for, for short trips, just for daily use, ah, I think it would be a great vehicle. And I know people that have purchased secondhand Leafs, even the 2010s, 2011s, for that reason, because they're just great cars. to Even if I've only gone 30, 40 kilometers a day, that's more than enough for it to handle. Um, so let me just skip down, uh, Doug, digital trends. Yeah, uh, we talked about that. Lucid. Um, I don't know if it was traveling at 30 miles an hour. I didn't read the whole article. I thought they did some highway driving. I thought it was a mix of, of routes. If it was 30 miles an hour, then boy, I could squeak up more, more range on my leaf. That's for sure. Uh, battery swap for heavy vehicles, buses. Yeah, certainly again, the battery swapping again, that whole lumps into, uh, the commercial sector, James, uh, where you're talking about transit and, you know, short, uh, medium range haul, uh, those kind of delivery applications, swap technology can work. You know, if you have a hub, you can do that. Um, I think it works. So we'll have to wait and see. And it definitely could allow for lower batteries, uh, battery cost batteries. Hey, Roy, how are you? Uh, got to go. Keep safe. Yeah, you too, Roy. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it a lot. Um, yeah, we're coming up on the hour mark, but uh, I think I might stretch this out if you guys are okay with that. I can go a little bit longer. Not that I've got a lot to do today <laughs> other than edit the, the, my next show to come up. Uh, so I appreciate that. Um, I did I did fall in love with the Soul, James. I really did like the Soul EV, and that's not something that I'm not ruling out as a next car. Uh, don't get me wrong. It just, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm looking for something that I want to do a bit more longer range travel on consistently... Um, you know, I love the Soul, but again, it's only going to pull 70 to 75 on a fast charge. And, you know, it's hard when the, a Model 3 or, or even a used S will come up and do 120, 130, 140 or more uh, to pull that, you know. It's really hard to compete with that. So because my use case for my next vehicle, obviously, will have bigger battery, but I want to do more long range driving in it. I really want to try branching out and do, going to, to larger multiple city hops and, and maybe do some vacational vacation driving in it, too. So that's where I'm thinking about. But I did love the the soul. Don't get me wrong. Um, our daughter. Yes, yeah, she does drive the leaf. Um, once in a while, not very often, because we, we got her a little uh, Nissan uh uh, e uh, note, yeah, the the note, um, a Versa note last year, and that's what she drives to her. She takes the bus to school to public transit, but she drives to catch the public transit and then go dry, use that to drive around. That's very economical, and that her last her years because she only puts about maybe five k a year if we're lucky on it. So, hey Johnny, how are you, man? I know you've got your leaf. I've had uh, Johnny is my uncle Johnny. For those who don't know. Um, he's had, uh, so I've had him on the show. His leaf is still the best car for him. It absolutely is. It's a great car and I hope you're feeling well. I hope you're doing okay, Johnny. I'll see you probably in, in another week or so. I'll pop by and say hi. Uh, London Kitchener superchargers. Yep. There's more popping up and that's another thing. There's so many more new superchargers now, you know, like to do, you know, if you saw Trevor and Ian do their road trip recently across Canada, I mean, I wouldn't drive like maniacs. That's crazy. But um, you know, certainly I think that the takeaway is that the infrastructure is there and it's just going to get better. And Tesla really does lead it still when you come to fast, um, fast charging. Yeah, Model Y, but uh, James at 70000 bucks Canadian with no incentive. Boy, I'm not going near the Model Y, but it does look like a great vehicle. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. Uh, ID3 won't be coming to North America. Uh, watch my next show. I'll talk about that. That's all I'm going to say there. Uh, standard range Y will be available in May. Hey, quick ice car reviews. How are you? Everything's good. Thanks for joining in. I know you're very active on my comments as well, so I appreciate that. Um, thanks for asking. Uh, VW is a massive company. They will figure it out. You're absolutely right, Tyson. Battery swapping for buses in China. Yep, BYD and other companies are leading the way there. Ionic is efficient, James. You're absolutely right. I'm just trying to catch up on some of the comments here. Model Y, I think, uh, will be a, a, a Inar. Inar. I'm gonna. I probably mucked up your name, and I apologize for that. But it's okay. Everybody, nobody can pronounce my last name correct half the time either. So I get it. Um, yeah, Model Y is going to do really well. The only catch that it might not outsell the three is the price point because it is a higher price point. Um, you know, you can get into a, 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 a base Model Three here for 55k Canadian with a $5,000 incentive. Here, the Model Y starts at 70. So we're talking about a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar difference. That's a lot of money for people, and with with what's going on now, and this and the and the 
at least the short-term um, uncertainty of the economic future, I don't think the Y is going to going to do as crazy as people might think. It'll do very well. Don't get me wrong, but it's going to be hard, you know, to to substantiate those kind of pricing. Hey, Leslie, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. We'll see each other at a meetup. At, I'm I'm sure one day uh, soon, once with the dust settles. Uh, thanks. Um, Yes, there are great deals on the Mitsubishi plug-in hybrid uh, that I talked about, the Outlander. There are some great deals in 2018. So if it's something that fits the bill for you, go get it. I mean, you know, anything with a plug, in my opinion, is pretty good. Um, China might bring back. I heard that they brought, brought back some incentive. So there is some upswing in the Chinese market, Tyson. Uh, that's definitely happening. Forbes, could a new cash for clump crunk? Clunkers program? Yeah, absolutely could. There are already uh, Doug programs in other parts of the world. In British Columbia, they have that. Here in Ontario, um, there's a uh, plug and drive is offering a $1,000 um, cash for clunker incentive. If you uh, go through their program, which is like a one hour session, you have to deal with them. And then you uh, trade in uh, an older car for you. Buy, this is for buying used EVs. So that's another example. So there are some of those types of programs out there and they do work. So I hope more organi more municipalities and countries and different areas um, look to do that. Uh, you guys are talking about wireless charging infrastructures for sure. Uh, what else? I'm trying to, I'm way behind on these comments here. Yep. Yep. James, your leaf plug and drive. Yep. The scrappage program. You're absolutely right. Thanks, Leslie, for that. Um, Ionic. Again, uh, Hyundai is doing great things. Hyundai uh, or Hyundai, as people tell me to pronounce it. But I have heard it three different ways. So when you guys uh, and gals, uh, uh, smack me on the hand for voice for pronunciation of words there are times where i've i've heard other people uh say a lot about uh, pronounce them different so you know and even the, the manufacturers themselves so anyway uh canadian value has much to do with its efficiency you're absolutely right waterloo region voltec how are you guys man good to see you second heave and evs are great yep but there's a lot of chevy sparks that have rolled through uh last year especially last fall uh, some really uh, good prices you mentioned there, and they're great as a secondary vehicle, even 130 kilometers of range. So even in the winter, if it's 70, if you're only doing 30K a day, you're still well within that. So with great, great cars to go around. Um, yeah, thanks about the, the speeds. That's basically what I was just meaning about that uh, on the speeds. Uh, Sandy Monroe, yeah, th that guy uh, seems to be very happy with the Model Y. Well, good for him. I mean, I don't discount Sandy. I appreciate all the analysts that are out there. But again, a lot of these guys are, are a bit dinosaurish. They're coming from the oil and gas and from the ice uh, internal combustion vehicle market because that's where well they've spent most of their career and their life in that so for them to kind of re really grasp around the electrification is a little bit challenging in my opinion um, and i only say that because i am um i am a uh, part of I, I think i tweeted that out that i've uh, uh, been accepted and i'm now a member of the automobile journalists association of canada which is called ajac and you can google them and they're a very uh, renowned organization of about 100 100 and so 120 130 i forget the number uh, so it's not a huge member but a uh, number but what it does is just adds a bit of more credibility to what i do as a journalist because i do try to always focus put a journalist hat you know some youtubers are entertainers and that's great i'm don't consider myself now when i'm mispronunciating or when i'm maybe saying something uh dumb on air or on camera then i may be entertaining uh but um certainly uh uh sorry we're just getting one of these uh canadian wide alerts about you know social distancing for COVID-19. So if everybody's cell phones are going off in Canada at the same time, that's what's going on at this particular minute. Um, but um, so, you know, I try to try to put my journalistic hat on and look at it from that and look at it from a consumer perspective. So, uh, so I appreciate when these guys are saying good things about it because it just helps them. A lot of eyeballs looking at the industry. Um, could not believe the Model 3 was, was designed as a hatchback. Yeah, you know, you would think. I mean, I, that's probably the thing that I noticed about it is that it didn't, but nobody's really complaining about it. Uh, it's got a very large trunk, uh, a good substantial opening and a large trunk, especially when you put the, the back down. Now, the Model Y, of course, is hatchback, so sits a little higher. It's got more attributes that I think that are more common. But, you know, again, that price point is going to be pretty hard to to swallow for some people. Putting out requests for electric highway, uh, 
Tyson, boy, you're you're psychic today because you're you're. I think you're asking a couple of questions about what I'm talking about on my next show, which will be coming out in the next day or so. So wait for that. I'm going to be talking about that too. Uh, Northern uh, Northern Manitoba. Hey, GM8, how are you? Thanks for jumping in. Greetings to you back as well. Appreciate it. Um, hope everything's okay. Uh, inductive charging, yeah, definitely more efficient. Uh, yeah, r pronunciation is a controversy. I guess so, Roger. But you know, we're only human, and everybody everybody has accents and and ways of speaking. You know, I try to get things right, but I'm not a linguist at all. I I muck up French. Uh, my wife is Latina. We've been married 30 years, and I still can't speak good Spanish because I'm just useless when it comes to foreign languages. So I try it. I, I, I try to do my best. So you'll have to forgive me on that. And I'm, I'm taking, I'm just going to plead the fifth and go from there on that. Uh, yeah, uh, it is a big price difference uh, in our, uh, in our, uh, in our uh, it is. Um, that's Canadian pricing. Again, your jurisdiction is going to change. Uh, yes, I've heard uh, Hyundai Sunday. Yes, I've heard that pronunciation, Ronnie, and I try to remember that. But but I, again, I've heard the others. Um, they say on current ads like Honda Plus Day. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Quick Ice reviews. Uh, thanks, Barry, on the Ajax membership. I'm uh, I'm hoping um, that uh, again, you know, because it also gives me access to the OEMs, gives me more solid access. Sometimes it was hard for me to get vehicles to review and to to get press releases and information. Now that I'm on that, I get more steady feeds, so I get another source of new feeds as well. And they have events and things like that. You're absolutely right. So uh, I've met the guys from Motoring, actually. They're really nice people, and they, they do. Th that's one program I, I enjoy quite a lot, actually. Uh, they've got some good things on there. So uh, appreciate uh, appreciate the thanks on that. Thanks, John, for that as well. Uh, you intrigued me on the ID3. Um, so, yeah, you'll hear more on my next show. There you go. Uh, Canadian pricing. That's exactly right, JP. Uh, again, your region is going to be different. Um, there you go. Model Y is about 10%. Okay, there you go. How do I pronounce controversy? There you go. <laughs> controversy. <laughs> I don't know. Is there another way? Uh, the Brits will say something different because I don't have a British accent. So hopefully that was that. Um, yeah, I'm, well, I'm trying to whet your appetite for the next show. Again, there's a lot of things I'm trying to get caught up on. Sorry, the emergency alerts are going off again on the whole COVID thing, just reminding us to social distance. Uh, it should be a good, it, it's been almost a week and a half now, two weeks since I did the last show. So there's a lot of stuff I was trying to catch up on. I was just really busy last weekend. Um, let's see, got to go. Yeah, thanks, uh, Jean-Pierre. Appreciate you sticking. I think I'm going to wrap up in about five minutes, folks, because I have some stuff to do today. So we'll go another five minutes. I appreciate everybody sticking around. I got, a, got a, you know, um, around 90 or so viewers. I appreciate that. That's I figured I'd get three people for this. So I, I'm, you know, I'm very humbled that you, that you all took the time to spend with me this afternoon and listen to some of my ramblings and answer questions. I appreciate that a lot. Um, I am forgive for not being able to speak French. Thank you, Pascal, because I would butcher your language like there's no tomorrow. Um, uh, but I did take French up until high school and, and one year in high school, and then that's it. I don't I never used it, so I don't talk about it. Um, thanks, Tom S T E Airy. Appreciate it. You're going. Thank you very much for tuning in and listening. Uh, take care of yourselves. Uh, quick ice car. Nice to see you as well. Tyson, I see for a higher federal EV incentive in this next budget to boost. Yeah, um, there, you know, there, there's definitely inner workings about continuing on with the incentives. But again, with everything going on now, and governments looking to pour, you know, billions and and in the U.S. trillions of dollars to help stabilize the economies and fight what we're going through, you might see a lot of this stuff either delayed or maybe off the table for some time and maybe comes back. We really have to. Uh, uh, you know that's where governments are putting their focus right now, and that's where we need to over the next several months to to get to get this. Uh, thanks, quick ice car reviews. Um, thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. Uh, happy. Hope everything's good out there in Wales. Uh, we have relatives in London, which we talk to a few times a week, so they kind of keep us informed with what's going on there. They're in the southwest part, in SW1. Um, Tesla just sells more expensive versions so first, so just wait if you want a cheaper Model Y. Maybe, yeah, I mean, uh, that's true. But it, uh, the numbers that I mentioned, NC, when I talked about the pricing, the 70K, the starting, that is for the lowest. They have two models, and 70K is the lowest price for the model. They had a third model, uh, a third option, and they dropped it about a month ago. And that was about 60, 63-ish, if I remember correctly. 
and I'm sure JP will will correct me if I've got that wrong. So it was a, it was about six or seven k price jump to the next one, and that and that pushed it over seventy k here Canadian for that's just base. That's without adding any options, picking the black or whatever the the, the free color and the free wheels and and not you know adding FSD or anything. That it's over seventy grand, so it's quite a lot. Um, price. For the Leaf, you have one. It's simply too expensive today with the 62. It definitely can be. It depends where you are again. Um, you know, here we can get the 62, um, I, and it's slightly less than the Model 3. Um, and again, some people don't like Tesla. They don't, they're, they're not technology people. They don't like that single screen, the sparse interior. They like buttons. They like, you know, more normal looking interiors. And, and Leaf has a lot of benefits when it comes to functionality and versatility. Um, you know, I was able to put eight, eight 15 inch uh, snow tires in my Leaf with just the back seat down um, and without using the front seat. And that's with a cargo carrier or cargo organizer that I got from Nissan when I got the car in there. So they're pretty versatile. They're um, uh, so, you know, again, it, it, there's a choice and I'm just happy that there's choice. I do wish Nissan picks it up. I wish I really hope that that this uh, area uh, concept that they've been flogging uh, will have uh, active management, liquid cool, that they're going to bring it up to me. Because the Leaf's a good all-purpose car, but it doesn't work in a lot of situations, in my opinion, a lot for a lot of people. But for the ma the mainstream, it works really well. So uh, we have to remember that. But yeah, you you know, you've got to look in where, what is available in your area, your budget, what you like, don't like. I always um, encourage people to test drive and to go sit in them at least and see what you can and all that kind of stuff. Uh, thanks, Anne-Marie, for the thanks on Ajax. I appreciate that. Uh, hey Lee, got, you got got here. Sorry to be late. No problem. I'm just about to wrap up actually soon. I was going to cut this at two, but uh, the questions keep coming in, so I figured I'll go another five ten minutes longer and then cut it. Um, so no problem at all. Uh, I believe this is going to be DVR'd, and then you'll be able to watch it back on the on the site after fact if I've set the, the settings right. Um, Talk about proper battery management with an EV. Yeah, it's a good good point, uh, Matt, with so many cars sitting idle. Again, uh, it does depend, though, on the manufacturer, right? Tesla recommends their methodology for charging and for keeping states of charge. Nissan says, do whatever the heck you want. Uh, other guys will say different things. So it, it's kind of varied, and it's hard to get one fit for all response to that question so i would you know rather than me trying to do that i would just encourage people to check out what they have in their particular model with their vehicle and check out what's recommended for that um that's true so the tax credit and rebates on the leaf can push the car down and that is true that's why it does come in uh but again you get the base sr plus three with the 5k off you can get the the unicorn base which is even lower but n nobody's really buying that thing uh, the online only version, uh, that's for sure. Or the in-store, I'm trying to remember. I, fig I think it's the in-store, you have to go in-store for that one. Um, thanks, Anne-Marie. Best regards to you as well. Uh, we're staying safe. Uh, Model-wise, crazy, crazy price. Yep, that's what I said. Start starting at over 70. Um, yeah, hatchback is a great, uh, versi adds versatility, but not everybody wants a hatch either. Some people like trunks. Uh, who knows? Maybe for Mafia, they're better cars. You can fill in the blanks there, who knows? Uh, thanks, uh, Michael from the UK. You're a Canuckle head living in the UK. Good for you. As I just said, we have uh, relatives, family living in London as well. So I do try to get out there once a year or once every couple of years. Again, with what's going on, I won't be traveling anytime soon, unfortunately. Um, yeah, tow bar. It's a good point. Many uh, EVA buyers don't have tow bar, but you know, they're not as popular as you think. I mean, I'm just going by what I see on the roads every day. And maybe one out of 10 have a tow bar. Most SUVs, even that's probably six, uh, six out of 10 have a tow bar, five out of 10. So not everybody has a tow bar. And I don't think it's as popular. I think in Europe, it's much more, in parts of Europe, it's much more popular in other places. But here it's so so. You know, most cars don't have uh, hitches. I put one on my Leaf, as you guys know. Um, I put a class two so that I could put four bikes on it. That's I don't tow anything. I don't plan to tow anything. It was only for bikes. We have three. So, uh, but on the on the occasion that I needed to put a fourth, I have the I have a rack that supports up to four. But it's uh, it's a two piece, so I can put it on and just have two bikes. I could add an extension for another two bikes, and it works great. So. That's what I did on my Leaf, but I wouldn't wouldn't encourage towing, but I knew people, I do know people that do tow on it. So we'll have to wait and see. 
Um, you don't get deals for EVs in Canada, John. USA got deals on the Bolts. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, some of those deals that I talk about, like the Bolts, uh, they're not coming up across the border. So you just have to go and try to see what you can wheel and deal. The dealers, I think, at this point in time are going to be pretty hungry based on what's going on with the dramatic decrease in sales. So you it might not be a bad time to, to buy if you feel confident and you are you have the, the capability and the ability to buy. It's, it's going to be a good time for sure. Uh, I think you can get some good deals on that. Uh, sometimes in the bad situations, uh, there are some positives that come out. Um, NC, you're the only American that prefers a hatchback as opposed to a CUV. Maybe. Um, I don't know. There are, I, CUV is such a broad category. A lot of people, a lot of manufacturers are lumping vehicles just because they're slightly bigger or they think it's a, a CUV. I don't know. I mean, I'm, you know, I've had so many cars from a Chevy Vega to a Camaro Z28 or Z28 to uh, Mercury XR7, a 77 with a 351 Cleveland, to a Datsun 260Z2 Plus 2, to a Triumph TR7 uh, with Schaumburg Carbs. I've had a lot of different vehicles, and that's a small sampling of vehicles that I've owned in my life. Uh, so, you know, uh, and they've all, they've all been for different reasons and they function different. So, you know, a lot of people like hatchbacks, um, but, uh, uh, again, it's good to have choice, right? It's good to have choice. So uh, see what happens. Would I consider the cyber truck? No, I don't, there's no need for me on a cyber truck, to be honest with you, Matt. Um, I like to plug, I like to park, we have three cars, three vehicles, and I always park two in the garage. I make, I, I keep the the garage clean enough so that I can fit the two in the leaf charges in the garage and, and then my daughter or my wife's car will park as a second spot um if i got a cyber truck there's no way in heck i'd be able to park that in the garage and, and bring another car in and be able to close it so that's one issue of uh, one concern for me and this other is i don't need a pickup truck i don't need anything that big um i mean the model y is would be a perfect size for me it's just again it's way over budget so i don't see that happening uh, for me either. But uh, hey, you know, again, there's a, gr a great use case for the cyber truck. Um, even if even if there was an E4 to 150, I've never owned a pickup truck, never had the need. Now, minivans we've had before. And uh, I'm just trying to think, I don't even think I've ever owned an SUV. It's either been a minivan or a car, uh, either hatchback or sedan. That's all I've really ever owned. So for my use case, it doesn't. But, uh, you know, hats off. Uh, there are a lot of people Roger, before I go, someone who doesn't have off-road parking, would be great if you could please do a show on on-road charging options and technologies. Okay. Um, I'll look at that. I know that, again, that's regional specific. You know, thing, places like London, UK is an example that are looking to build out light standard charging. So they'll, they'll wire up lights and have uh, have level two charging off of that. So that, that for on-street parking. Um, those are where we're seeing some of the, the technologies. There are some things, there are some air areas about inductive elements where the city might or companies might install inductive uh, plates uh, at parking spots on off on road parking and in parking garages. Uh, I'll try to look into that. Um, thank you, Anna Marie. Appreciate that. Yeah, I was really happy to be invited to CBC National News uh, back in December to talk to them about a three part show to answer a couple of questions for a couple of minutes. I was pretty happy that I'm plugged in with those guys and they're really, really nice people. Um, in store, call Tesla for that that unicorn model three uh but yes it's locked and apparently it's locked to that software it's not just limited but it's locked you cannot uh pay to to increase it that's what i've been told if anybody has anything different let me know but that's for that unicorn 35k model three which i think it's locked to about 90 miles an hour 90 miles of range about 130 150 kilometers something like that as from what i'm told um but it does qualify for the ev incentive that's the one that gets it in so uh i don't know anybody who's got one though but uh, anyway uh yeah you know the, you're right uh inar uh, inar that the leaf the 40 kilowatt is a pretty good value and you can get some you know i had a, a viewer uh, that phone that we talked over the phone actually he wanted some advice about a 40 kilowatt leaf because he was able to get a 2019 model at some really good savings you know pretty well brand new just uh, you know uh, they're trying to blow the, some of these out so uh, you can you know you can get them for under 30k you're right so um, and if you can get that you know tax credit in the U.S. that's still there um, it works uh, yeah thanks JP thanks for jumping in I appreciate it I'm going to okay it's 12 218 I'm going to let's do another couple minutes and then I'll start signing off here 
um, and then we'll close this down. Uh, great to keep in touch virtually. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the turnout. I, it looks like I'll, I'll, now that I've got my stuff together for this on how to figure it out technically, uh, I'll probably end up doing more of these, especially since we're all in fairly lockdown modes for the next while. Uh, hey, Pino, I know you like the hatch for sure, and you've got your, your stuff for sure. Um, uh, thanks, NC. Uh, civility is something I pride myself on. I, I can certainly get passionate if I need to at times, but uh, you know, everybody's got comments and, and beliefs, and that's that's great. That's what makes the world go round. I, you know, it's nice to do that, for sure. So thank you for that, um, David. How are you, David? I haven't seen you ask a question. Have I heard any any municipal incentive programs yet in Ontario? Um, not that I've heard of. If anybody from Riva is on here, I know that there was somebody earlier that they might be, know something that they could share. Uh, I'm not aware of any direct municipal incentive programs as far as purchasing a vehicle. Not Nothing that I'm aware of. There might be something to do with some charging elements where you may be able to get some free charging or some uh, cost augmented charging from municipalities because there's a lot of work going into that. Um, but I'm not sure about um, anything else. Glenn, is a Kia Soul available in the U.S.? It is. It's just been pushed. And I think I talked about that a couple of shows ago, that it's been delayed. Coming, You're talking about the brand new one, the 60, uh, 64. Um, it's been pushed to 2021, unfortunately. And I'm not, that's just, I believe, a supply issue with Kia. Uh, stemming back to the battery stuff, the, and they're pushing in these into some other markets right now. Even here, it's not. I don't think it's that easy to go get one. You have to wait. Um, but anyway, it it should be coming back into the U.S. Uh, the, that that model for sure. Um, if Mark, if new battery tech leapfrogs today, it's it is a matter of time. There'll be great deals. You're absolutely right, and we will see that. You know, but remember, folks, I I believe that um, we're you know there is a sweet spot, right? I think that sixty to seventy five you know kilowatt hour pack size is a pretty good sweet spot because if you can get you know 380 to 450 kilometers let's say you know with the model 3 pushing 500 kilometers you get you know so four to 500 kilometers uh what's that um 300 uh, miles so that's uh what 240 to 300 mile kind of range uh and decent fast charging you know in the 70 70 kilowatt range uh that you can get you know a, a good amount of the charge pulling that that seems to be the, the secret sauce then i think we have a great vehicle that i don't think you need you need to for just everyday use i mean obviously if it's a pickup or it's a big suv you need bigger battery packs i get it but you know i think that kind of size and range is really good for the vast majority of the marketplace and uh, I think that that's where we need to kind of focus on and manufacturers need to focus on efficiencies more there and energy uh, densities, uh, energy versus the density stuff there. And I think that that's a, it's a hit. Rich Rebuild. Yeah, I watch him once in a while. Um, no DC fast charge. Uh, thanks. <laughs> okay, you can send him my email and tell him to reach out to him. I don't know. Uh, again, I'm not currently in the market to buy anything at this point, obviously, with what's going on. Um, but uh, again, Tesla is top of my mind as a potential for next year uh, when, when I think the market, uh, when, when the stability will be back in the economy, of course. Uh, I, yeah, I, I agree with you, James. I don't think it is unlockable um, because they don't really want to sell it. This is just a way, a loophole that Tesla could get into the uh, federal EV incentive program and be able to have some uh, and a one model offering or two in this case, but nobody's buying the bottom line. It was really just a loophole, but good. Uh, yep. Okay. So there we go. Waterloo regional uh, region, Voltec, uh, Riva, just plug and drive. So that's all where I'm aware of too. And, and if you're not sure who plug and drive is, go check them out. The great organization, Kara and her team, they're fantastic people there. We, we partner as, uh, uh, Waterloo region, Voltec knows all the time with these guys. And, um, we partner and do a lot of events co uh, together and they have a private, um, uh, beneficiary that uh, has put in uh, built a, a fund that uh, they are doling out for used EV purchases. So go check it out if you want more info on that. Hey, Iceland, you're in Iceland. Okay, so now I know finally where you are. So I am butchering your name most likely, but I do appreciate you letting me know. Uh, your brother uh, buys in the U.S. and has it shipped to Iceland. Well, if that works too, if there's no import or sales tax, that's a pretty good deal. We would get hit here in Canada with import and duty taxes and GST as well. So sometimes it doesn't make sense just to bring, bring that kind of stuff here. Um, and, you know, and to throw something 
I think on a boat, uh, you're asking James uh, to ship it over. It's probably a couple of grand. It's not as expensive as you think, uh, for my understanding. There's a lot of that happening. Tyson, I'd be happy with 400 k Yeah, I'd be, you know, I drew, I drove the Leaf Plus uh, last fall, August, September. And again, I was pushing the 370 range, and that was more than enough for, for booting around. Uh, I would like probably a tad more because in winter, I still need winter range. And when you're dropping down to half, I'd like to be able to have 220-ish of range. Uh, uh, highway driving, so I'll be specific there. That's kind of what I'd like to see. And I know with the Model 3, you can pull that off with some of the older, uh, with some of the Model S's and the older ones uh, with the 85s and that kind of stuff. Well, certainly the 100s, but they're super expensive. Uh, you can pull it off, so you know uh, again, and then you get those faster, you get those faster charging speeds. But uh, yeah, I mean, again, 400k, I'm bumping this mic is a great, great uh, range, all for sure. Uh, your e-tron, yeah, e-tron's a great car. I know. Um, I had a chance to drive it. Super nice, very quiet. Like wow, really quiet. Um, and uh, just again, it's expensive, right? It's a hundred k here in Canada to start. So you know that the the, the Jaguar I Pace or the Jaguar I Pace, trying to pronounce it for my uh, UK friends, um, that starts at uh, what is it eighty nine thousand for for with you know, and then you have to add something. And you're at ninety thousand before you even get out the door. So you're at a hundred k Model S, you know, hundred k. Um, it starts at I think ninety nine k here in Canada. So these are expensive machines. Uh, not for the masses, and uh, certainly something that you have to uh, have to look at. So Kia had a, a virtual uh, similar loophole. I wasn't aware of that. So there we go. Hello from Germany. Hello, how are you, Andy? Uh, as I mentioned, I have a lot of family in, in southern Germany, in the Munich area, so I try to get there a few times, you know, once every couple of years or so. I was hoping to get out there this year, but we'll have to wait and see. But uh, thank you very much for tuning in. All right, folks, uh, so let's go five minutes. We'll be half on the hour, and then I have to cut it off for sure then. If you have any other questions, please put them in now so I can try to get to them. Uh, yeah, two to 2,000 to 2,200 to ship from Portland, Maine. Wow, that's really good to Iceland because that's a long haul. Whether you're going under south, uh, you're going uh, under uh, the African continent and up, or you're going through the canal um, and up. Um, that's pretty good. I would actually suspect they're probably going not through the canal because you have to pay more fees. But anyway, who knows? Um, and thanks. Yeah, I, I will definitely do future live streams now that I've been able to get a good sense of, of how many people get on and the questions and that you guys are enjoying me rambling. I'd like to be able to enable some sort of call-in feature at some point and get you guys to ask questions over like a phone line, like a radio show. But I haven't figured out technology yet for that i'm looking into that i'm trying to find as much free stuff as i can nudge nudge wink wink uh, there's a lot of stuff out there so but uh yeah i think i'll definitely start doing a bit more of the live stream stuff now that now that i figured out how to work it and i apologize for some of the false starts earlier today it was just testing the connections and trying to figure out how to start these things and trying to figure out how i couldn't stop it that was part of the main you know it, it's weird it's automatically starts and stops when you launch your your broadcast software uh, that I have. And I'm using OBS because it's free and most people are using OBS, so it's pretty straightforward. But I just had to learn all this stuff, watch videos and read stuff to learn it. Uh, let's see, any other questions, guys? Uh, last couple of minutes, uh, the under 45K Soul had a smaller battery in the 55. Yes, it does, correct. Uh -huh. For sure. And before everybody drops, um, again, I want to wish everybody to stay safe. My heartfelt thanks for everybody that does watch and subscribe. Please take care of yourselves and your families. Um, adhere to your local uh, officials and both health and government officials and uh, regulatory about what you need to do. You know, your regions are everybody's different. Um, oh, it's not through the canal. Sorry, I got I get distracted like a squirrel. Oh, something shiny. What's going on? I got to stop that. Um, so please stay safe adhere, you know, stay at home. It does save lives. There's this whole movement going on if you can. I mean, you know, go out when you need to, but, but take the precautions and we will definitely get through this. Absolutely for sure. Thank you for tuning in. So uh, I know saying it. No, it, it doesn't go through the canal. It goes straight to the North Atlantic. Uh, there you go. Okay. Interesting. From East Coast, U.S. to Iceland. Okay. There you go. Oh, you said Portland, Maine. Sorry. I, I was thinking Portland, Washington. No, uh, Portland, Oregon, sorry. I didn't read that. Yes, East Coast, that's an easy run. So yeah, 2K is about right. 
Yeah, and then it'll it'll be trained over to there or wherever wherever you're buying your car from. So it's it's much less expensive. I think they ship something across Canada. Like I was looking at cars in Vancouver or BC because they're typically in greater shape. They don't get a lot of rust and stuff. And to get something out here, it's like 800 bucks. You know, throw it on a train. They wrap it. They they take care of it, uh, which is a really good really good deal. So. Uh, ID3 has big challenges uh, with the software. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Again, I haven't. A lot of that is still speculative. So when you read those articles, Pascal, uh, make sure you read them because a lot of them are saying, you know, rumors or we're hearing or people are saying, and that's third party to me. If, you know, when the vendor comes out and says, yeah, we're having it or, or it's confirmed by a, you know, by the uh, software manufacturer or the electronics or whoever, I, then I would say that. I, I think they are probably having some struggles with that because it's newer for them. And, and it looks pretty cool. Again, look at my treat, tweet from today uh, and check out those videos on Inside EVs. Uh, sorry, on uh, Clean Technica. They show a lot more about uh, some, some little commercial spots uh, that VW put together on ID3. It's pretty cool stuff. I mean, they have a HUD in the top line. They have all these. It's really, really cool. So they're, they're doing some stuff. So if it takes a little more time, appreciate it. Thanks, James. I think the, li the live streams are great, especially that we can uh, kill an hour, hour and a half together. I appreciate that. And I'll, I will definitely do more. Thanks, Tom. You too. You and your family. Everybody stay safe. And Roger. Thanks, Anne-Marie. I appreciate that. Uh, what, time for one more question. One last question, if anybody has one. Uh, shoot it up there now in the comments and I'll get to it and then otherwise I will let everybody get on with the rest of their day so I'll pause just for a sec take a sip of water because it's getting dry down here in my basement <laughs> my unfinished basement which uh, is my all-purpose everything down here uh, Chinese cars will gain a foothold in North America. Yeah, they will. Um, the, you know, there's a lot more. I know Chinese manufacturers are already pushing into the U.S. and other vehicles, not necessarily with EVs. Um, it's just a matter of them, you know, getting ramped up with that. Um, people's quality concern issues, uh, if they have any, that that there's um, that there's none with that. You know, there's a huge market in China already, right? One point whatever, two billion people. There's a lot, huge markets. Yes, there's a lot of manufacturers. So it's got to make business sense for them to be coming over across the, the big pond as well. Um, uh, oh, uh, what I guess the last question from, from Leslie here. Um, oh, maybe, James, the ID software. We'll have to see. I don't know. Um, I have, I have, I do have a J adapter. In fact, I got that like right away. Uh, so I've had it for a couple of years. It works great. Uh, it works great. Um, no problem, Pan 9876. You joined late, but thanks for this. No problem. All right, guys, it's 2.30. I'm going to close it down. Again, please, everybody, thanks very much for watching and for participating. It was a lot of fun for me for my first time. I'm very humbled and appreciate it. Everybody stay safe at my usual. You know, I'll see you when I see you next time. My show will be coming up in a couple of days. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.